What's going on guys? Welcome back to this channel that's all about architecture, engineering and construction and we're also we are all about bettering the African narrative. What we're going to do basically in this video is to, to break down for you the costs of a building a three bedroom house. But this time we're actually going to be doing it in two contexts. We have the higher end and we also have the cheaper end. Of course, we are going to be comparing and you'll see why people, uh, why it costs people different amounts of money to actually build the same house, but differently, okay? So, um, the way we are going to do it is in this way. When I describe cheap, I don't exactly mean that we're going to do something that is very cheap, okay? Uh, things like using corrugated iron sheets or things like doing, uh, doing very, very shoddy cheap work, okay? I'm talking cheap on the cheap end, but at least very decent, something you can really be in. But of course, yeah, just a normal human being can easily tell that this house wasn't really expensive and also for example let's talk about the roofing if i talk about the roof and i don't mean exactly using like those old corrugated iron sheets but i can talk about using iron sheets like super eco which are really cheap but they are really good okay then also when i talk about the high end i don't really mean the very very expensive kind of construction i mean something building while you are really considering quality and having really the good quality someone that can see at the first side and say this is really a good house for example when i talk about the iron sheets i can say that we are going to be using roman tile iron sheets or using versatile iron sheets than using material so that is expensive but not really at the very expensive like most of the other expensive things okay i hope you really try to catch those two cons those two contexts okay so, um, of course, in this very video, we are talking about the same design of a house. It's actually a three-bedroom house. Thanks to our design team that have prepared this simple three-bedroom house for purposes of just discussing this video. Something that you people can easily relate to. Uh, but uh, we are talking about this house. We've decided we've done it as much. We've decided to make it as simple as possible. But just for purposes of illustrating in this video, just a three-bedroom house with a master bedroom being self-contained and also with a shared bathroom and two other bedrooms. Basically, with the dining and the kitchen an open plan semi-open plan okay as you see in the video because you have that grill that is actually separating the living room and the dining and then also uh it has a kitchen as well and also a porch at the back of the house just a simple house okay of course you are going to keep many other factors constant uh because they mean they are really honestly the many factors that really affect the price or the costing of the house uh, things to do with labor and also things to do with the design okay but like I said, we are keeping the design simple. Then if you talk about things like labor, it really, that really has to do with the engineer The engineer that is actually building for you. Um, for example, you might just choose to have normal builders, okay, who are just experienced. So you might choose to have uh, someone who probably will give you much better quality work. There is really no standard for labor that this is what it's supposed to cost, that it should be 30% or it should be 20% or 40%. It really depends on exactly who is building for you. But of course, when you're choosing for, when you're looking for a builder, you just need to look at someone who has some bit of theoretical or technical understanding of how the building works and how these materials are actually mixed together to come up with something good. And also someone who has the practical experience and the neatness or who has a, a team that can actually produce that neat work uh, that that is considered on the higher end, okay? But anyway, that is really a discussion for another day. We are specifically going to be discussing the costs only for materials. For the labor, we are not really discussing it. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's head to office and work on that. Uh, so as you can see on the screen, we are going to basically be doing this in phases. Um, we have, we are going to do it in phases until the whole house is done. Okay. Uh, of course, in this very video. So um, we are going to be having two columns. As you can see, we have the blue column, which is uh, representing the cheap end. And then we have the orange columns, which are actually representing the high end. Then at the end of the day, we are going to be summing up everything cumulatively uh, so that we achieve the figures here. And then we also sum up everything on the high end and we have the figures here so that we can keep track of how much uh, one is ahead of the other. Okay. So um, starting off right away, uh, of course, we have uh, other columns. We have the item, we have the unit, then we have the red. We have quantity and we have amount and that is the same also for the high end okay just to give you an example uh on the cheap end we are basically having clay bricks here we have um, clay bricks for the high end and we have mud bricks for the low end 
or for the cheap end. Mm -hmm. So you find each mud brick is about 250 shillings, of which the clay bricks will also be about 400 shillings. And then if you have to look at the totals, you see we are already in differences. Okay, of course, the clay bricks are much stronger than mud bricks. Not to say that the mud bricks can't work, but they can work, but the clay bricks are much more stronger and much more durable than these. Okay, so uh, already you can see for the brickwork, we are already here in 2.4 million. And then here for we have 1.5 million. Then we go to lake sand and plaster sand. If you notice very carefully, the prices of sand are actually different. Uh, on the cheap end, we have sand being at 220 shillings, 220,000 shillings for a forward truck, and then 260,000 shillings for a forward truck on the high end. Because uh, even lake sand actually has different types, okay? There's the good quality, which is usually Luera sand. We call it Luera. It's usually from Massacre. Uh, basically, it's white lake sand. And that is usually much more expensive, but it gives a stronger bond. It gives very strong, stronger bonding capabilities with cement and gives a really, really, really stronger mix of mortar. And of course, with the other lake sand, the yellow lake sands, the dirty ones, you can get them at 220,000 shillings per forward truck. And also, if you are to be also very vigilant, you realize that we have for lake sand and plaster sand, this on the cheap end, quite a number of people do a mix. Um, they put plaster sand and also mix it with lake sand so that they can also kind of um, neutralize on how rough the sand is and also um, to cut down on the costs but in the total we are using eight strips here and eight strips here just that here the eight strips are divided into lake sand and plaster sand which is usually cheaper as you can see so um, the plaster sand really also however much it neutralizes on the effect of the rough particles in the bad sand uh, it also cuts down on the costs, but the mix is a bit less stronger than this one that is purely lake sand, okay? But it also can work, like I said earlier on. So we have cement, you realize the cement we have about 150 bags, and here we have 201 bags. Remember, what we are doing is basically from the foundation and also up to even casting of the ground slab. Okay, the reason why you see the differences in cement here, we have 150 bags and here we have 201 bags is because here we have used a, a weaker ratio, which is one to five. That means one bag of cement for, for five wheelbarrows of sand. And in this scenario, we use one bag of cement uh, to four wheelbarrows of sand, which is literally going to take more cement, but will give you a stronger, something that has more integrity. Okay, then you see the prices of cement. Um, remember what you're trying to illustrate in this video is how people build houses and then some others end up more expensively than others or others end up more cheaply than others, okay? So you see here we have 31,500 and we have 32,500 because we have different types of cement on the market. And uh, usually those which are slightly of a less quality or not really, not necessarily a less quality, but they have not been tested over time to be the best brands of cement, okay? You usually find them being 1,000 shillings cheaper than the normal brands that we have gotten used to because they have been tested over time and they really give good quality of work, okay? So also um, we go to Maram. Maram is not really compulsory in every place, but here where you see under the cheaper option, we literally do not have any maram. And then on this other higher end, we have uh, maram. We have actually five trips. This is because some people choose to raise their houses above the ground, which also has its advantages, okay? Like I've explained before in another video. So um, having this maram here and having your house raised has a lot of advantages. And of course, that gives you an extra cost on your pocket. So uh, we talk about aggregates, we have hand crushed and we have machine crushed aggregates. Uh, you see that uh, hand crushed aggregates, just a trip, a forward trip is 250,000 shillings. And then the machine crushed is 330,000 shillings. If you are not able to tell the difference, I can show them to you on the screen that uh, here on the left, we are having the um, hand crushed aggregates. And here on the right, we are having machine crushed aggregates, okay? Of course, when you are doing a bungalow really, um, there is not much of a difference. You do not really need to use machine crushed aggregates. This is just looking for quality, but it's not really, in general terms, it's not really that much necessary to use machine crushed aggregates on a bungalow, okay? 
And then we go to DPC, we have uh, two rows each, they should be the same. But you see here we have that of 85,000 and you have one of 120,000 because the DPC is also in, um, it's also in different gauges. We have gauge 900, gauge 800, gauge 1000, gauge 1200, the higher the gauge, um, the thicker the DPC is, okay? And of course, that is quite obvious for what the reason of DPC is. DPC is basically for stopping all the damp or all the water from the from the substructure from going to the superstructure. Okay, so um, having the thicker DPC will definitely give you more assurance of that water not actually tampering with the rest of your house upwards. Okay, so you can see how much difference that causes. Then we have hardcore material here. We do not have any hardcore. Not quite many people uh, do hardcore. Uh, but uh, those who do hardcore really know what hardcore can do. First of all, besides all other advantages, it helps you in uh, cutting down the capillary forces of water that is rising to your slab from all the substructure. And also it gives you a really, really firm base for your ground slab to sit uh, besides other, other, other advantages. I uh, do not want to make this video very long because the purpose of it is basically to tell you the differences as I stated before. Then we have um, iron bars. Here we do not need any iron bars in this scenario. And here you see that we've indicated we need iron bars, four pieces of iron bars, Y12 iron bars. If you see those two pillars in front of the house that you've designed, you can either do them uh, with uh, just normal brickwork or you can actually do them with columns, which you can actually do them with columns in terms of uh, using iron bars and cast concrete. And that will definitely give you a much stronger column not to say that the one that you have built with bricks won't stand, but this one is actually much stronger. The one that you've done with uh, iron bars and concrete is actually much stronger than the one you just do with plain bricks, okay? Then uh, the rest of the things should really be the same. We have the ropes, it should really be the same. We have profile boards, those are for setting out, should really be the same. When it comes to hoop iron, uh, here we put zero because some people actually ignore a hoop iron which is really, really a very important element of the substructure. If you never put hoop iron in your structure, you might realize after some time, because of the rainy seasons coming and uh, the dry seasons coming, you find the soil, there's a chance that the soil can destabilize, which might cause your foundation to unevenly settle. And that will cause a crack in your foundation, which will definitely be translated to the superstructure. And you have a crack. These cracks are usually vertical in the building. They are either usually vertical or diagonal, but you can see that it's propagated right straight from the foundation. Um, then the nails sh should really be the same. Uh, the building strings should really be the same. Not much of a difference. The same with timber. Uh, this is Jirundu. Uh, the timber, the four by the nine by one, then there's four by two timber, they should really be the same. But anyway, uh, right now, as we talk, we are already about four or five million apart. Just by telling the difference, you can see here we've ended up at nine million, here we've ended up at 14 million. Okay, then when we go now to the from the after we finish the ground slab, and now we're actually going to the wall, the walls, building of the walls, all the way up to the wall plate, and this definitely includes the ring beam. Okay. Of course, I talked before that uh, though we are doing cheap, we are not meaning very, very cheap. Uh, some people build houses and never put ring beams, which is really, really, really risky when it comes to dealing with things like earthquakes and very strong winds. Okay. But here, of course, even our cheap, uh, even our cheaper option has a ring beam all throughout. Okay. Uh, so uh, we are going to talk about the burnt red bricks first versus the clay bricks, same as up. The difference you can see it clearly. The one with the clay bricks is going to cost you up to 4.7 million, and this will cost you just about 3 million. Then we go to lake sand and plaster sand. I've explained that before. You see here we have uh, four and one, which makes a total of five trips of sand. And here we have five trips of sand. All is lake sand, the good quality sand, white lake sand. And this is uh, the, just the yellow lake sand, which usually even has some uh, particles that are not evenly distributed within the sand. And of course, you can use plaster sand to compensate for that, but that's not really enough, okay? Then uh, we have cement, uh, we have 80 bags here, 95 bags here. Again, the reason for this difference is all to do with mixed ratios. Uh, in the cheaper end, you use uh, cheaper, you use, use lower mixed ratios of one to five, one to six, yeah? And there are those who just, just use the good ratios of one to four, that is one bag of cement to four wheelbarrows of sand. 
Okay. Then uh, we have aggregates hand crushed. That is mainly for the ring beam. But like I said, when we are doing a bungalow, you don't really need machine crushed aggregate. Hand crushed aggregate can do that job as long as it's clean hand crushed aggregate. Then we have the DPC I explained before. Then we have iron bars. We have 22 pieces. Here we have 32 pieces. Now this is mainly for the ring beam. Okay, if you look at the difference here, the house is the same, remember the design is the same, but some people choose to say that in the ring beam they're going to only have three iron bars, I mean in the cross section of the ring beam. So you find uh, that someone who is doing what is genuine is actually going to have four iron bars in the ring beam, which is actually going to give you a ring beam that is stronger and that has more integrity. Then uh, we have poles for scaffolding, they should really be the same. Uh, the hoop ion might not be the same because here we have four pieces and here we have eight pieces. Uh, usually we need to put hoop ion after every about three to four courses, but some people might choose to say that, no, I'm going to have after about every five to six courses. Okay, so that is where someone is going to end up spending much less than this one. Okay. I've explained before, I think in a video, uh, that the, the importance of having hoop ion in our structures but anyway, that's a video for another day. Then the rest should really be the same, the timber, the nine by one. Then here we're having uh, the rings. We have R6 and R7 rings. Uh, they are those of 6,000 shillings and 6,500. Then there are those of 9,000, that is the R7, okay? Then you see the difference here is 80, and you have 100 pieces, where we have 80 pieces here. That has to do with the spacing of the rings in the in the iron bars that we do usually in the ring beam okay some people choose to space them much more so that they can actually use less rings but uh, but they are always ideal values that we use based on the standards to actually make to actually know what exact spacing of the ring you should use which is usually about 150 to 200 millimeters okay uh, then we have binding wire this should be the same the timber should also actually be the same Okay, then we go about the roofing. Roofing is almost going to be the same, uh, except what is going to be different is going to be things like fascia board. Uh, someone might choose to say, no, I'm just going to use uh, these normal timber fascia boards. And then someone will say, I'm just going to use the PVC fascia boards, which actually give a neater work and uh, work that's actually smarter. But the main difference on the roof is actually going to be with the iron sheets, if you look carefully. Uh, here we are having to use super eco iron sheets. Here we are going to have to use um, versatile iron sheets or Roman tile iron sheets, which uh, of course the number is going to be the same as you can see here, but the prices are going to be very much different. And remember the qualities of house that we are building is something that someone will see on first sight and really already see the difference between the two houses. Not to say that the cheap one can't stand, the cheap one can also stand, and someone can actually comfortably live in it, but the one on the high end is really a house that someone would look at and say that's a good house. So um, the ceiling is most certainly going to be the same. There's not much that is going to really change about the ceiling, uh, except for the quality of sun that we use. Then talking about the pre-electrical installations, those are the conduits that we pass through the ceiling. Uh, that is before casting the ceiling that we pass through the roof, okay? They're also going to be more or less the same, save for just a few, a few different changes in qualities really, but everything is almost the same. And then uh, we talk about the plastering, okay? But as we talk about the roofing, everything, including the pre-electrical installations for the roof, you see that we're already uh, in the difference of between 34 million and 48 million. So the difference there is almost something like 14 million already. 18 million, roughly 14, okay? So um, we go to external and internal plastering. You can only see that difference is just within the quantities of cement, okay? This also has just to do with ratios, the mix ratios. Uh, one of the major ways that people actually compromise on the building or one of the ways that people cut costs on buildings is by compromising on the mix ratios, okay? And the effect is not really, cannot be seen immediately. It might be seen in only when there is something really serious to do with weather or time over time. You see how the house is actually responding that you can even just peel off some part of that mortar or that plaster with just a handle, with just a key. Anyway, uh, when you look at things like stonework, you see we have stonework of 30,000 here, we have stonework of 50,000. The stonework we are talking about in this scenario is that stonework that you see on that splash apron. So you might just choose to have uh, normal stone pitching, which might cost you just about 30,000 per square meter, even less. Or you might choose to have uh, smarter stones, slates. 
uh, that might cost you just about 50,000 per square meter. Then the total of the cheaper one will take you now to 39 million and the total of the higher end will take you to 54 million. I think you can already see the differences coming in. Okay, so we have openings, uh, that is windows and doors. Uh, as you can see on the screen now, this one is really very, very heavily, depending on who is making them for you. But usually the quality is quite obvious. If you just look at many doors, look at, for example, let's say like timber doors in this scenario, okay? We have the doors, uh, the door and the frame being at 500,000 shillings here. And uh, also, uh, looking at the doors and frames, we have a variety of timbers. We have the um, Sambia trees, we have mahogany trees, we have pine. Uh, some are stronger than others, okay? Of course, the best really young should be mahogany, which is going to give you stronger frames and doors. And then we have other average, average uh, timber types that uh, things like pine, uh, there are even people who make kalitunsi uh, doors, okay? But the problem with such doors is that probably after a period of time, after they've installed the door, it might start warping and getting out of line, or they might easily be attacked by things, or they might easily be vandalized by someone just kicking it a few times. It might just get damaged than actually when you have a stronger door, which is usually mahogany. But anyway, those are to be discussed. Uh, different different other places then you look at things like uh, glass we have five millimeters some people just choose use five millimeter glass uh, on which you will find a sheet at 490,000 shillings and then others might choose use four millimeter thick glass which is about 410,000 shillings of course the difference really is in the strength uh, five millimeter thick glass will definitely be much stronger than a four millimeter thick glass but the difference is not as easy to spot Okay, uh, you can just be able to spot it when you look at the thickness of the, of the glass very closely. We have things like feeding foam, that is the putty, that is the silicone and all of that. This should really be the same for putting in the glass. Then talking about the painting for the interior, nothing really should change much about the interior between the two, the two versions of houses that we are comparing. But when it comes to exterior here, we should we just use normal weather guard paint and in this scenario we are using texture paste that's why when you look at these last two rows we have texture paste here being zero and here we have the number of buckets also being indicated so um right now as if you look on this column on this side we already have just about 52 million and we have 73 million uh, that being the cost of materials by this stage okay when it goes to floor tiles, this is also a very highly debatable section. Uh, there are these normal tiles that might cost you just about 25,000 shillings per square meter. And there are those that will cost you just about 60,000 shillings per square meter. This is really a broad topic because uh, the price of the tiles will basically depend first of all on the size of the tile. There is 60 by 60, there is 40 by 40, there is 50 by 50, there is 30 by 30. The higher the, the the higher the size of the tile is, the more expensive it is because they also have to add extra thickness to the tile to give it more body, to be able to stand on its own. For example, uh, the 60 by 60 tile is just about 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters and it will cost much more per square meter than having smaller pieces of tiles which are either 30 by 30 or 40 by 40. Okay, of course you can easily make that judgment when you are on ground and you're able to see the two tiles or the different uh, pieces of tiles and able to compare. Of course the other determinant is the manufacture of the tiles. There are Ugandan made tiles, then there are Kenyan made tiles, there are Spanish tiles, there are all varieties, there is Dwight Ford, there are quite a number of posts and you can easily judge or decide which is better after seeing them physically and knowing what the pros and cons of each are. Things like you've seen tiles that actually suck in water, they're not really waterproof, they suck in water after some time after mopping and you see just maps of water developing on the tile. You might have seen that somewhere but um, all that has to do with the price of the tiles. So the next is really the electrical installations. There should really not be much of a difference, uh, save for just a few things, like the type of conduits that they choose and all of that. If you're be able to look at the screen, you might be able to tell the difference of what is more expensive than the other. Take an example of this consumer unit. There are different brands of electrical, of electrical appliances and also electrical wires and uh, 
uh, different gadgets that we really need to install in the house. For example, you look at this consumer unit that is 200,000 and then there's this of 320,000. They are those that have a longer warranty than others and they're also different brands. There's, uh, there's Chint, there's, uh, there's PowerPlay, there's Power Unit and all of that. They are different manufacturers of uh, these uh, consumer units and they are brands that have been tested over time to make a reputation that they are actually much stronger, they produce much stronger products, okay? And that is why sometimes they cost much more than others. But anyway, you can just look on the screen and be able to tell the difference. So for the electrical appliances, the difference is about 800,000. Okay, so we're going to go and do the plumbing. We have, uh, in the plumbing, most of this pipe work is going to be the same, but for these first three sections where we have the wash hand basins and we have the water closets, which is just the bidet or the toilet seater, okay? Uh, there are those of 550, there are those of 800. Again, this has to do with manufacturers. Some of them are really weak that just after about three months of use, it can't flush anymore. The flushing system is faulty things like that okay so this is where when it comes to finishing this is where the huge difference comes in mainly in expenses of, uh, of who is spending more than the other but of course the difference can only be known after a, a quite some period of time okay then uh, looking at the kitchen cabinets we decided to include this because it also varies you can do your kitchen cabinets with marble okay uh, this person, of course, in this first scenario has not used marble, or you can just use it, uh, the tiles on the kitchen, because there are also tiles that are specific for the kitchen, for the kitchen worktops, okay? So you can see that someone who has used marble is spending much more than someone who has just used tiles to just do tiling on the kitchen cabinets, and that's it, okay? Uh, this is really for you to decide at the end of the day. But for us, we are able, I believe that you're able to understand why houses really, really differ in pricing. Uh, and this has a lot to do with the choices that people make along the way. So without even including labor, you can see why one is costing 70 million, another is costing just about 99 million. If you were to put labor, if you were to consider labor just roughly saying, this one might cost about 25 million. Um, so you can see literally um, that um, there is someone on the cheaper end who has spent 69 million and on the other end there is someone who has spent 99 million now if we are just to make rough estimates of the labor this one being just about 21 million which i think is about 30 percent and then this one being 35 million you will see that this person has ended up spending 90 million and this has been a 134 million okay but of course you as someone who has watched this video from the very start you can see how that accumulatively has actually come up i hope you guys have had so much to learn from this video and i hope that the next time you will really understand when uh, when making choices of different things in the market uh, so that you can easily be the major determinant of how much your house is going to cost you otherwise thank you very much guys for watching and this is darwin